Hi guys, so today we're in Chippenham and behind me there is St Andrew's um, Church and Graveyard. So we're going to take a look around. I'm going to flip you around first just to give you a look at the, the village. So the building just dead ahead of you is actually a 15th century hall. So quite amazing. There's a little town square there. If I pan around, this is St. Andrew's Parish Church. And with some really, really interesting um, graves. So I think we'll walk around this way first. And I'm going to bring it inside. Now, I've just been in there. And there is some amazing um, statues and plaques on the wall. Um, but unfortunately, there's music playing so I might have to talk over it. So these, you know, it's kind of full of these tombstones and you can see by their condition that there's not an awful lot we are going to be able to read on them. But they are really, really beautiful. Now this one is to the memory of Sarah, wife of Robert. The date seems to be completely gone, but you can see how weathered the stone is. This one just has initials TL and AE, 1849 and 1850 just there. This one has nice designs. It looks like a weeping willow tree maybe. And you can see there again, mostly unreadable. But look at the, the colour of the bricks and this beautiful church. I'm just going to show you as well. We have these beautiful faces on either side of this beautiful door. Look at that door. And another one here. Okay, so let's keep going. There is a, a beautiful um, grave just around the other side. As well, quite unusual. Look at that. The different colours in the stone is just beautiful. But, you know, there's no writing left on them which is a bit sad, but we can still see how beautiful it must have been. And I'm just going to turn around, look at these beautiful buildings that run along the side of the church itself. But the colour of the brick for me is just gorgeous. Let me know what the type of brick is used here for this church. It's absolutely stunning. I do remember when I was in Edinburgh, the buildings were quite similar in a style and colour. But every tombstone we see they're just like melted with the weather. I mean, it's so strange why this has um, affected the stone in such a way. But it is beautiful, even in the condition it's in. This one has a huge hole right down into the center of it. It goes right down.
they're all similar in style but um quite different to uh, what we see in Ireland this beautiful tree here look at the size of that isn't it just gorgeous it all seems to be mainly tombs in here This one says 1847, 16 years and eight months. Also in memory of Mary, their daughter, 1847, 16 years and eight months. So very, very young. So there's not even that many headstones here. It's quite unusual. See 1841 here at the bottom, aged two years and four months. John, Witcher, it looks like. Susanna, wife of Thomas Brown, aged 53, 1783 there. Daughter of Thomas and Anne Brown. Age just one, 1788. Thomas Brown, age 66, 1796. Then we have a huge section that you just can't read. And as I said, down at the bottom, then their son, John, age just two and four months. All of these tombs would have been beautifully decorated. but just all seem to be the same condition, like they're completely worn. This one looks like we might be able to read it. Sacred to the memory of John Beams, son of John and Mary Beams, who departed this life 1876 aged 66 they are really beautiful I just love the stone this one was really nicely decorated actually on either side you can see the cherub faces At the top it says, here lieth the body of, and then gone as well. What a pity. It does look like 1797 possibly there. The body of you something 18 something it's such a pity I see 77 years here 1848 looks like George Beams 1838 Margaret beams on this one. So these are all beams around here. More nice designs, 1814. William, unsure of the surname, who died 25th, 1841, aged 45, also of Mary, his wife, died December 22nd, 1814 aged 44 and her daughter was just 18 when she passed in 1844 I believe as well 
Susan, I think, was the daughter. Look at the way the stone kind of blackens. Look at that. To me, it looks, it looks like it's almost like a fire has happened beside it. But I can see the same on the church. You have dragons and more. Maybe an angel up there as well. We have an old clock. Those beautiful doors. This one also highly decorated with the angels here on either side. Quite stunning. Beautiful in fact. These are huge. These are almost up to my shoulder in height. But you can see writing is completely gone almost like it's dissolved and even the stonework feels kind of powdery to touch now this is the unusual grave i've been talking about i mean it is in the shape of a coffin i've never seen anything like this one before look at that Almost like a mummy's tomb. Just there it says JS1839. And let's have a look at the headstone. In memory of Joseph, son of Joseph Spires of this parish, who died April 22nd, 1839, aged 59. Beautiful headstone. Writing is really, really, um, you know, for its age. I wonder is it new actually? Because it is in remarkable condition. But just look at that. It's gorgeous. Gives me a vibe of a bed as well actually, when I stand here and look at it. But certainly, coffin shaped very unique and then beautiful parish church absolutely stunning so every tomb that we have seen more or less is exactly the same in style. We have three more here. This one also would have had, I think it's a cherub here. And they're quite actually, you know, they're very close together. So would they have been the same family? All we can do is presume yes. said there is music being played and it is beautiful but I will probably have to talk over so you can hear the music but as we come in Near this place lieth the body of Mary Pinching, the wife of Robert Pinching, who departed the 12th day of February, 1643. And here also lieth the body of Mary, son of Robert and Mary Pinching, 
who departed this life October 16, 96, age 70. So unfortunately, um, I can't let you listen to this beautiful music. Um, I'll be copyrighted for it. But what I will do is walk you through this fantastic church. Um, we're going to take a look at some of the plaques and see the beautiful church as well. And this is for um, Walter Scott Gent, late one of the Burgesses of this borough. Who died the 15th of March, Anno Dom 1714. Now the, the writing on it is actually very, very hard to read, as is the one above. But the one above, we'll see the skull again. And this says, near this place lieth the body of Alice, the wife of Henry Gouldney, clothier, and the daughter of Mr. Richard Scott who was interred the 4th day of April 1670 and was baptised the 11th of October 1631. Now it's quite interesting that they put the, the date there for his baptism as well. But um, when we pan around here to the right, you will see that all around this church, up at the top, we have faces. And all these faces are looking down at you. They are so well done really lifelike and absolutely stunning images of men and women. So standing facing the nave altar, the 15th century South Isle is on your right. It houses one of the church's greatest treasures, the monument to Sir Gilbert Prine and his wife. Um, the monument was originally erected in 1628 when it stood in the south chancel of the chapel where it blocked the westernmost window. Now, fortunately, it was moved from there to its present position against the South Isle Wall during the major restoration and rebuilding of the church in 1875. Uh, the monument has been considerably improved by the cleaning and restoration carried out in 1981. The figures and the brass tablets below the monuments are worth inspecting and five of the seven children depicted are shown carrying skulls and that signifies that they died in infancy. So as we take a closer look at this fantastic memorial, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. So Gilbert Prine actually ordered this memorial to be made after his death in 1628. It depicts him and his wife and their family of seven children. Now, not necessarily all girls, though their dress suggests, at least to our eyes, that they were. Um, the five below all holding skulls indicating that they all died in infancy. Two daughters survived. Um, a reminder that though the family must have been hugely wealthy to afford such an elaborate memorial, no one is immune from tragedy in this life. With the inclusion of the five who died, it's an affirmation of hope that the family will be together again in the kingdom of heaven. also a first for me and um, we have this little area for children to come and play which tells you that children are always welcome in this church and it's just such a beautiful um, idea I suppose that um, children can come and just play while mass is being said so we're going to take a walk around and I'm going to tell you some of the history of the church so the church has 12th century origins, but was largely re rebuilt in the 15th century, including the addition of the ornate South Chapel, which was built in 1442 for Walter Lord Hungerford. Now, the tower has a base from the 14th century, but the rest was rebuilt in 1633. 
the church was restored in 1875 to 1878 when the roof was raised. The chancel extended and the interior rearranged. A vestry was added in 1907. The tower's eight bells were cast in 1734. Traces remain of a west gallery, which prior to the reordering in the 1870s contained the seed organ. The gallery was taken down when the organ was enlarged and moved to the east end of the north aisle. There was also a gallery at St. Catherine's Chapel, also no longer in existence, though supporting stones for it can still be seen in the interior walls. Now, just up at the top, it says here lieth the body of Thomas Hawkins, gent, late of the burgess of this borough, who departed this life the fourth day of December, Anno Domo, 1676. And this one says here lieth the body of Alice Hawkins, daughter of Robert Hawkins, um, 1657 here and you can just see that old English writing which makes it actually really really hard to read note then on top of this one we have the skull again such beautiful detail and this is in commemoration of William Pugh Gent and Grace's wife and the date here is 1635 and 1648 I believe and um, just amazing look at that writing as well absolutely stunning and I, I suppose you're you're seeing as well these beautiful stained glass windows and just look at that stone. The stone is just stunning. And uh, we're just going to walk across here and have a closer look at this gorgeous window. I absolutely adore stained glass and the colours in this one are just remarkable. Now, as we pan around, we're looking at the entrance of the church here and then I'm going to bring you to the right where the organ is. Now the organ is a large tree manual and pedal instrument with 46 speaking stops. It retains much pipework from the organ by Bryce Seed of 1752 together with the fine case facade, pedal pipes and mechanical stop changing facilities which were added by Holditch in 1852. In 1879, the instrument was rebuilt by Gray and Davison when it was moved from the original West Gallery location to the North Isle Organ Chamber. Further additions then were made in the 20th century. Right, so guys, I think I've actually found the music that was playing while I walked around St. Andrew. So I'm going to put it in the description box below. Please listen to it. It was absolutely stunning. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And also, most important, hit the notification bell. That will let you know when I upload again and when I go live. So guys, that's all today from this beautiful church, St. Andrew's Church, um, Chippenham. And um, it's just absolutely stunning inside. Loved the cemetery or the graveyard and uh, on to the next place. Take care guys. God bless and I'll talk to you all soon.